Now let's look at some of the difference between C language and C++ or the Java language. Some of, let's first look at some of the similarities. First off, the syntax is very, very similar. Remember, we use lots of curly brackets and we always end statements with semicolons, things like that. The uh, keywords, the uh, main function, the uh, things like if, for, while, all of these things work the same pretty much between these three languages. They're all actually related to each other. So C++ was, of course, developed based on C. Java was uh, developed after C++ to help fix some of the problems that people were finding uh, with that. So there are, these languages are all related. Uh, they also, C and C++, uh, organize their code using header files and, and source files. Uh, so uh, .h files and .c or .cpp files uh, are the same sort of organization. Now let's look at some of the differences between the C language or C++. Uh, so first off, C is a systems language. So that means that C is built for developing operating systems. It's developing, built, designed for building low level whole systems, right? So operating systems are developed using C most often, uh, not C++ or Java, surprisingly. Um, the C++ or Java languages are, uh, you might see them described as systems languages, but they're really uh, application languages. These are, these are where we develop our applications. They're class-based. They rely on an operating system. They do things at a much higher level than uh, C, and they're meant to do that. Um, in C++ and Java, uh, some of the data types are abstracted. So uh, particularly in Java, the system, the language runs on top of virtual machine and the uh, data type uh, can be a little fudgeable, right? Like an integer is not necessarily the same thing on every system uh, and it doesn't actually tie back down to byte level memory or anything like that. Whereas in the C language, uh, these data types are fundamental. Every a byte is a byte. A uh, integer is always four bytes. Uh, things like that. And accessing these uh, low-level pieces of memory, we access that memory directly in the C language, and that gives us a lot of power. But it also makes our code a little bit more complicated. Uh, in C++ and the Java language. Relatedly, they have memory management uh, built into the language. So we have the new and delete keywords in C++, we have new in Java, and we have garbage collection in Java. These are uh, things built into the language, where in the C language, dynamic memory wasn't a thing when it was developed. So instead of it being part of the language, like new and delete keywords, we have to use things like malloc and free, which are actually part of the standard library. Those were added after the language was developed because we didn't have anything like dynamic memory. We had to declare all of our memory ahead of time. This is because the C language was designed this way, that makes it very good for low level operations. So C++ and Java languages are really great for desktop level, application level, mobile development, stuff like that. But for embedded systems, C is where it's at. When we're developing robots, when we're working with low level hardware directly with the hardware, when we're developing drivers or operating systems, most of this development is done in the C language instead of the C++ or Java language. Now you might be wondering, what about assembly? Um, not so much. Uh, assembly really sucks. It, it sucks to develop lots of big programs in. Uh, it's it's a pain in the it's a pain, right? So uh, the the idea here is that uh, something simple like this little for loop uh, actually ends up. I mean, this is very readable. I know exactly what it's saying. I know exactly what uh, it's trying to say, and it's really easy to write that. It may, might take me five, you know five minutes tops to write it, debug it, and get it running. Whereas the exact same thing in assembly looks like this. I have to manage my registers, I have to manage uh, my data, I have to manage my loops, I have to do all kinds of extra work just to get that happening. So we don't use assembly very often, but we do use assembly where it counts. So if we have something that needs to be extremely high performance, it has to be very fast, we, you know, we can dip down to the assembly level in the C language. We can actually include inline assembly in the C language itself, uh, C language source itself, and do things super efficiently. So we can take over from the compiler when it really counts. And that's where uh, assembly really shines. 